Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Mila. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for spending some time with us and for going over the laws, statutes, and commands of Messiah Yahushua. Now, for those who do not know who Messiah Yahushua is, that is Jesus the Christ. There were no J's in Hebrew, and so our Creator's son's name was never Jesus. In fact, that is actually saying the son of Zeus. Prior to that, they had his name as Ius, Ius, Isus, I E S U S, and both of those are the son of Zeus. We are not, the son of Zeus is not who we are worshiping. The son of Zeus did not come and uh, take away our sins for us or give us a chance at the kingdom to come. Um, his name is Yahushua. And so these are the laws, statutes, and commands of Yahushua. Now we are in month nine on our creator's calendar. That makes us on the 11th day of his calendar so on our creator's calendar is the 11th day of the ninth month on the uh, babylonian satanic calendar it is the fifth day of december and it is the second day on our creator's calendar which means it's the first day for all of you guys who are out there working because it uh, a lot of people you know have sunday as their sabbath and then they they go to work on monday but it should everybody should be working on a sun they should be working on sunday okay so here we go on this. Um, Eli, how is your wrist? Um, it's feeling better. It still kind of hurts though. It's a little hurts, but you, is, do we determine if it's broken or if it's not? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not broken. Okay. Um, so we are. Uh, we don't think it's broken. Thank you very, very much. We had. I, I guys. I'm, first and foremost, I am a little bit behind on comments. Um, I, I I don't want to blame anything other than I guess I haven't made it there, but. Because the Hallelujah Scriptures did what they did, we ended up with like five different channels. And so I'm always jumping over to channels and channels, channels, and we're getting kind of backed up. When we, you guys comment, we see the comments immediately. It pops up. It goes right to our devices. Um, but as far as it's getting back to where we can comment back, and, and we do like to comment personally on everybody's comments. So if you guys don't get comments for a couple of days, please understand that we did see the comments and that we are, we will get back to you. It just sometimes takes a little bit. We have kind of a lot of fires and wars we have going on here. So we saw yesterday Tess and um, Cindy LJ were talking about um, Eli and his wrist. And, um, you know, she said, you know, I think one thing that Cindy said that I saw is that it could have been far worse, right? It could have been something, it could have been far worse, right? You could have like slipped, cracked your eye out or, you know, there, there's a lot of bad things, but Tess and, and Cindy were, were praying for you. And so this is the love that we have for our little digital family out there. And we know that we can get hurt, we can get broken, we can do stupid things. And we still have you guys out there that will hug us and love us. And we really, really appreciate everything. Nicole, what do you got? Brother Glenn also commented. I don't know if you saw that I, one or I didn't not. see that one. Um, but he said, watch out, they attack. They come from nowhere. The rocks. The rocks. Yes, they do. <laughs> the rocks go out there. And Brother Glenn was a soldier of, uh, I don't know, a soldier of doom, I guess would say. Because he was a soldier all his life. And so if there's somebody who knows about rocks and falling down on rocks, that would probably be he. And so um, we love you guys. We love our little family out there. And we appreciate it. Now, Kate, um, you were sick yesterday. So I'm going to have you go over what happened yesterday. Oh, we just talked about that. He actually didn't read this, so he doesn't know. Um, Eli, what happened yesterday? Do you remember? Um, trying to remember. But trying to remember. Um, this is, we are striking out here. It disappeared from my mind. Jaden, where are you at? Jaden. Okay. Well, I don't know where he's at either. Um, he was here with us. So, yesterday's, um, Nicole, what happened yesterday? I'm putting you on the spot. So, he was telling people about the Sabbath because the Pharisees were going off about him healing because there was somebody that had the bent lady. The lady oh, was right. Bent over. 18 years. And she was. so he healed on the Sabbath. Yep. And they were all going off on him. Um, just like always, just like they always do is what they do. And so um, I guess you'll have to reread that one, Cade. Yeah. So you're feeling better? Less less sick? Yeah. Did you, so. did you have the COVID-19? No. No. Sorry. Yeah. That's uh, that's for that's for beta males. Those are for the COVID nineteen is um things we can't even talk about on YouTube or anywhere else, right? Um, let's just say that we used to all get colds and we used to all get a box of tissues and we also used to lay in bed for a couple of days and sneeze it out, cough it out, but it's become something totally different. You know what I mean? So I'll leave it at that so I can keep this channel up. Here we go. We are on Lucas fourteen. And it came to be, 
as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Shabbat, that they were watching him closely. And see, there was a certain man before him suffering from dropsy. Okay, um, suffering from dropsy. I think you have that, Eli. Uh, and he says suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Oh, you know, I thought that that could have been your mom too. She sometimes has the dropsies, and you have the dropsies a lot. I, I thought that was something else. So we're not talking about this guy dropping things? Okay, probably. I, I just feel like that's not a, uh, that's not like a defect or anything like that. It's just like a, a balance issue or like a grabbing issue. Like hold the thing. Uh, the dropsy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have the dropsies around here, and, and usually it's because you're really tired. Um, and you drop things, something of the sort. But this isn't what they're talking about. They're talking about something else. And so the NIV says he has an abnormal swelling of his body. Um, what would that, I mean, what can we think of um, the dropsy? I would think of like facial paralysis, something of the sort, because they, uh, that is the one thing since, I, I don't know if anyone else has noticed since the year 2019, people all of a sudden half their face is down. Um, I think one of those Satanist, um, Justin Bieber or something, one of those, um, the ones that drink the blood and, and sell his soul for Satan. I think he ended up with it. And then his, his wife ended up with like this. She's, she's dying now too. They're both dying. So, you know, if you could put two and two together and figure out what happened in 2019, why everyone's dying, you would be smarter than 95% of the rest of the world. Okay. So he has the do dropsy. We don't know what that is exactly. Three. And Yahushua responded, responding, spoke to those learned in the Torah and the Pharisees saying, is it right to heal on the Shabbat? But they were silent. So taking hold of him, he healed him and let him go. So whatever was going on, um, Messiah Yahushua just did. Um, we're having dog fights here, guys. So we're trying to deal with this too. We have a very needy dog and Eli only has one hand. and He's trying to pet the needy dog and it's just not working out. Did Jade not come back? I don't think so. Where yeah, Jade? Oh, okay. All right. So I guess we will continue on to do this. Okay. So is the question he had, is it right to heal on the Shabbat? Eli? No. Oh, uh, yes. No. Uh, sorry. Why'd you say that? I meant to say yes. You meant to say yes? Yes. All right. We have other dogs. I'm sorry, guys. We're just under understaffed here. Hold on. Let me see what we need to do to get out of here. Um, Okay, Eli, you said no, it's not right to heal uh, on a Shabbat. Um, oh, I said yes, but I, I thought you were going to ask me something else. And then I what said, did you think I was going to ask you? I was talking about the Pharisees. Oh, and you, you thought no out of, out of the gate? Yeah. Were the Pharisees good guys? No. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I guess we're not supposed to, to heal on the Shabbat. Um, yeah, we are. Okay, we are. But they were silent, so taking hold of him, he healed him and let him go. And to them he said, Which of you, having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a pit shall not immediately pull him out on the Shabbat day. Okay, so and he says if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well. A child or an ox that falls into the well. Wow. Um, and the, uh, I don't want to say, well, I hate to say this, but the, the king says, which of you has a donkey or an ox? So are they saying the child? I don't know what to think about this whole thing. Um, if, if you guys, <laughs> some manuscripts say donkey. The NIV says a child. So the king drops the A-bomb and says the child is the uh, donkey. And <laughs> what do we make of this, guys? Um, so do we grab our children out of the pit if they fall in the pit? And I always leave them like Joseph. And then when like, the Mitzrites come by, we just sell them. Sell them? That, that's, that's, I don't know. What if the Mitzrites don't come by, though? Do we leave them in the pit? The highest bitter. Do we throw Do we throw food down there? Do we take care of them or something or what? Yes, of course you pull them out of the well. Don't be a savage human. <laughs> okay, so that was very interesting. So um, the, the king thinks a uh, child is a donkey, and the NIV says the donkey is the child, and then um, we just have a regular donkey. So, maybe it was a kid. Maybe it was goats. Maybe it was a child of the goats. It could be. Kid it, is a goat. Yeah, but it says child. It didn't say kid. Maybe. Okay, let's continue on. Six. And they were unable to answer him regarding these. The question is, Jaden, um, and he's back just for everybody, which of you having a donkey or an ox has fallen in a pit shall not immediately pull him out on the Shabbat day? Um, have we ever encountered problems with our animals on Shabbat? Yep. Do we pull them out of the ditch when this happens? I don't think they fall in the ditch, but if they have problems, we help them. Do we had a baby that fell in a well one time? Yeah, that that was on the Shabbat, though. Um, yeah, it wasn't on Shabbat? Mm -mm. Okay, that's good. All right, let's continue on. 
And he noted a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, give this one place. And then you begin, then you begin with shame to take the last place. Rather, when you are invited, go and sit down in the last place so that when he who invited you comes, he shall say to you, friend, come up higher. Then you shall have esteem in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. <clears throat> what is he saying by this exactly? He's saying be a humble person. Don't put yourself up so high that you get humbled and you're now embarrassed in front of everyone. Don't embarrass yourself like this. You need to be humble and then you will be esteemed. You will be, you will be basically shown that you are a better person if you take the lower spots when you go in. Yeah, and you know a lot of this I think is like the the kingdom of the 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 Shemayim, right? The the reign of the Shemayim, the kingdom of of heaven, the New Jerusalem when it's coming. Those who think they're going to be great will be last. Those who think they are worst will probably be first, right? It's a lot about humbling. It's a lot about having a clean heart. It's about having a clean mind and being very, very humble, being as a child is, right? That's what it talks about. The kingdom of heaven is made up of, of people like the children. And so um, if you go and you go sit in these great spots, then you're going to get kicked out of that spot because you're not really re invited there. Okay, or 11 says, for everyone who is exalting himself shall be humbled. And he who is humbling himself shall be exalted. And he also said to him who invited him, When you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, nor your brothers, nor your relatives, nor your rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. What does that mean, guys? It basically says when you give, don't ask for something in return. Yeah, if you're making a big feast, if you're making a feast for those, don't do it for your rich friends. Don't do it for your brothers. Because he says that they will invite you back. What does that mean? I mean, basically, you didn't, like, do a gift. It's basically a trade or something. It's just, a, it's a party, right? If you invite someone to a party and you invite them, then the next time they throw a party, they're going to make sure that you are invited. Um, but the point of this is not that. Listen, but when you have give a feast, invite poor ones, crippled ones, lame ones, blind ones, and you shall be Baruch because they do not have to repay you. For you shall be paid at the resurrection of the righteous. You shall be repaid. For you shall be repaid. What did I say? Paid. Oh, yeah. You shall be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Thank you. And when one of those who sat at the table with him heard this, he said to him, Baruch is he who eats bread in the reign of Elohim. Okay, so what do we, what do we have to hear? The dogs are just really going crazy today. Okay. Um, what does it mean, blessed is he who eats the bread in the reign of Elohim? Uh, basically, you're eating, you made to Elohim's kingdom, you're eating with him, you're eating the food of Elohim. Yeah, if you, may, if you eat any bread in the reign of Elohim, that is a celebration because, yay, we made it. Absolutely. 16. But he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come, for all is now ready. But one by one, they all began making excuses. The first one said, I have bought a field and I need to go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and because of this, I am unable to come. Okay, so what happened? What, what are, before we go on to this, what is, what is going on with this? So basically this... Rich person held a feast. He's holding a special time, and all these people said, "I can't make it." I have all these things. All these important people. He said, "Hey, here's just come on down. You're invited. I have all this food. Just come down." And everyone's like, "I can't." And they all made a bunch of excuses. Yeah, one guy would decides he needs to go plow his oxen. Right, he plows field with his oxen. I mean, that would be fairly exciting if you got five new oxen. I mean, that would be the first thing I would want to do with an oxen is I want to try it out in the field um, and see how good it can do. You know, you just got a, a new plowing device. Okay, so um, what what is the point of this? I mean, is it, are we are we bad by denying people and people invite you stuff? I mean, what is what is what is the message that we're seeing right here? Um, some people can't make it to a feast. Some people are are rejecting the feast that is coming. Is is really what's going on. And that servant came and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house, being wroth, said to his servant, 
hurry out into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and crippled and lame and blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and there is still room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the street corners and hedges and compel them to come in so that my house is filled. Why does this guy want his house filled? Because that means he held a feast. There's enough food. He wants uh, all uh, his basically feast to be successful. He wants uh, his he wants people to be there to eat of his to labor. To celebrate, right? To, to celebrate whatever it is they're, they're celebrating here. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. And large crowds were going with him. And turning, he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and his own life too, he is unable to be my Talmud. Okay, Jade, what does this mean? Uh, basically, he says you cannot love anyone more than him. If you love anyone more than him, then basically you can't be his disciple. Yeah, and that would be, you know, you would, this is a one of these verses that are really, really hard to understand. Um, because people, we don't hate our mothers and fathers and wives and children and brothers and sisters. And what is the the bottom line, I mean, to this? the You guys, anyone? What is the bottom line uh, that he's talking about here? They say we have to basically not, like, leave our our entire families, but we have to like basically set Yahushua higher than the rest of what we have. Yahushua has to be the number one on our hearts. Yeah, absolutely. And there is, um, there's a families that we have here in, in, um, all over on Yahoo and the Torah and also in the telegram group where their entire family has, uh, basically just denied them. Um, they, they think they're in a cult. They think they're, they're, um, they just, they, they essentially, what this verse says is what these we're having to live out these days. And, you know, it, we have, as a family, we have been rejected by all of our family as well. Um, my mother does not want to hear anything about the Torah. She does not. She's just a hardcore Christian and she's got it all figured out. She doesn't want to hear anything. Um, my wife's parents don't want to hear anything that, you know, the Holy Roller, Jason and Nicole or whatever, you know, it's just like we completely are ixnayed out of our entire groups of people. And that is what we have to be okay with. We have to be okay with our family hating us for the sake of our Messiah and for the sake of the kingdom to come and for the Torah. Okay, 27. And whoever does not bear his stake and come after me is unable to be my Talmud. For who of you wanting to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether his possessions will finish it. Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is unable to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was unable to finish. Or what sovereign, going to fight another sovereign, does not sit down first and take counsel, whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So then every one of you who does not give up all that he has is unable to be my Talmud. So this is, um, and this is not a Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D, which is the Babylonian evil um, books that they have of, of Judaism. But the Talmud is what, gentlemen? The, this kind of Talmud is a disciple. It is like a, a disciple or like a, a follower. Follower, a Talmudian, yes, the, you're, you're a follower of, of our, our Mashiach. Okay, the salt is good, but if the salt becomes tasteless, with what shall it be seasoned? It is not fit for land, nor for manure. They throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so what, is he, what does he mean here if salt becomes tasteless? What, is, what does he mean? Basically, if, if it's no longer good, if basically the salt can't be seasoned anything, it goes away. How do we equate the salt to human beings? Basically, if we can't teach anymore or if we're not doing what Yahuwah needs us to do, then we have become tasteless. We have no good fruit. If you do not have a light that is shining or you have taken your light and you've hidden it under the table, you become saltless. You are unable to take and you're unable to flavor the food of our creator. The food of our creator is the Torah. That is what we have and that is what we are supposed to be um, telling everyone about, right? About the good news, about the Torah, about the, the kingdom to come, the way of the future, the, the way when the world is going to be, uh, the evil is going to be bound and we are going to be taken away. And so if we are not out there constantly trying to enhance the kingdom, then by default, we have no salt. 
if we are not telling everybody about the good news, if we are not taking that one opportunity and we're not loving the poor and, and taking care of the widows and doing all of this, then we have no salt. If we walk past those who are broken, if we do not stop to minister to those who are broken, if we see somebody alongside the road and we go to the other side of the road so we do not have to encounter them because we do want to be emotionally disconnect, you are saltless. Your food, your flavor is terrible. And that is what this means is that we have to give up absolutely everything. We have to give up our understanding that we are not going to be comfortable. When you walk up to people who you don't know, it is an uncomfortable situation. You have to have enough courage that you are willing to put the salt onto the flavor of the Torah and love those who do not know the way to the kingdom. And it, a lot of it is if we do not, if we lose our flair, if we lose our ability to keep driving and keep delivering, then we become this little itty bitty tiny light and pretty soon the light goes out and it's just like a candle. All of a sudden it gets bright for a while and then it goes to the very bottom and then it burns out and there's nothing there. So we need to salt our food all the time. We need to salt the food of others and we need to be that light that is shining for all time. Anyone else have anything? Um, tomorrow is Youth for Yacht in Spanish. Youth for Yacht in Spanish, yep. And we are continuing on for those who um, do listen, a little small group of people that are left on this channel. Um, anyone there, um, please pass it on to anyone you know who is doing Spanish speaking stuff. And I guess that is it. Thank you guys very, very much. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.